Okay, so what we're looking at here is something that's very, very crude, and it's important that everybody understand what they're looking at is very, very crude. Um, <laughs> what we've got here is something very similar to what uh, Mark Cicero was uh, brilliant enough to uh, devise the other day. Now, what I've done is I've taken a portion of what I had uh, actually created. It was much longer. And ultimately, what we're going to do is, uh, or what I plan on doing, is putting these little plastic inserts sort of along the line so that we can make a longer sifting unit. Uh, just station these in, in varying uh, degrees of uh, uh, position, so and with reinforcement, of course, so that you've got a nice long sifting unit. Now, I've reversed the polarity on this, what was a fan motor, uh, from one of those large industrial fans. So it's a rather powerful motor, which means it spins pretty quick. Now, it does have a potentiometer, which ought to regulate the uh, the power, but it may have to be changed because uh, just the strength of the thing, it's designed to move an enormously large blade. So need something with a little bit more uh, voltage control or a potentiometer that's going to re reduce the resistance and limit the speed at which it turns. I would prefer that it turn as slow as possible. As Mark proved yesterday with um, the uh, the use of a drill, at least a drill has a variable speed, so uh, that solves that problem. I've also drilled holes in uh, certain areas around the uh, the primary shaft, I guess, this area here, that um, is now permanently affixed to this first portion of what will soon become a longer sifter. This side over here actually unlocks. Now right now the polarity works against the unlocking mechanism so it can't come apart, but that's essentially what we would open to deposit whatever material we want to deposit into the, uh, the sifter. So we're going to give it a little bit of a test run here and see what happens. If I just sort of move this way, you can kind of see the setup of the motor. The first part uh, to the right that's got that strap over it, I wish I had a clamp in here, but I, I just uh, for the sake of getting this done in quick timing. Beside that uh, to the left is the potentiometer and then beside that the ultimate control. The potentiometer has two functions. One is that it can control uh, uh, from start to finish the rotation of the unit so you can actually have the power switch turned on and the, f and the sifter in this case not turning at all. So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch it on uh, just very, very briefly because there is a lot of shaking here because of the lack of mounting um, in terms of in terms of how it should be mounted. I mean, it, it, what we should be using are proper clamps, etc. And you know, the holes here are too large, and you know, they just don't match with the diameter. So, if I take this guy, you can see that I can turn it. Now, as you can see, that's whipping around pretty quick. Now, that's that right there is the threshold of the potentiometer. So you can see it, it tries to compensate at the slowest speed, but it just can't get it because it's, it's driving a 14, 18 inch uh, fan blade normally. But if we change that, then we can remedy that situation. So the shaft down here, uh, works to our favor, of course, because it fits perfectly into, and there are locking mechanisms on the shaft that comes out of the motor. Uh, the motor, I wish you could see a little better, but it's a little hard uh, to construct this quickly. Uh, the hole here is entirely too large. I tried it with the box, but it was shaken all over the place. So that's a kind of a sifting concept. Uh, this area here does the primary shifting, or the sifting rather, obviously. Uh, but will be, and you'll have to use your imagination, will be considerably longer. What I'm looking at is something that's going to be at least the size of a rough neck container, um, potentially even longer than that. And that's the first stage of sh uh, uh, sifting, certainly not the last, because that will take out the large elements, but not the smaller elements. So that, uh, that part there, and if I zoom out a little bit, uh, oop, zoom out a little bit, then you can see, and you can see in the background now this little oscillating fan that I had way back there. That is um, 
a smaller fan still so the, even though that's got a very powerful motor in it as well you can imagine that um, the smaller the the smaller the fan the smaller the uh, need for power and hence the slower the the unit would have turned so the potentiometer or a rheostat or something like that probably can take care of that part of the circuitry so gonna start working on that and over time hopefully you'll see something that's a little more dramatic um, and more to our purpose uh, the question being sifting and how it affects the worms as opposed to sifting uh, horizontally like in a fanning mill which Jeff does at friendlywormguy.com and how that affects the um, the worms uh, but uh, so far so good uh, we're getting there and the machinery is coming along step by step so one more thing to add to our little treasure trove of interesting ideas and uh, I guess I'll conclude with that happy vermi